Welcome to Solder Village. My name is Aaron. This is Chris. And this week, we're going to talk about worms every single day for our history bound. And Chris is going to tell us all what all of this is because it deals with worms. Chris? So we're going to be talking about vermicomposting today, which is basically having a big worm farm to make compost. And you might be asking, why would you want to use worm compost? Well, our gardener loves worm compost. Actually, I should say, her plants love worm compost. <laughs> and really what worm compost is, is just a fancy name for worm poop. And our gardener will take this worm poop and mix it in with her other garden soil and plant uh, vegetables. So she also sprinkles it around our fruit bushes and uh, makes a really nice, strong, healthy soil for them. So I'm gonna give you a little idea about how to go about that. So to start off, the very first thing you need is a farm itself. And you can use any type of container. I really like this one, Erin, because it's plastic. It's nice to put some holes in the bottom for drainage. Um, if you don't have a lid, you can use cheesecloth and a rubber band to put around there so your worms don't escape. Heaven forbid, your worms <laughs> escape, right? You don't want worms out, no. And you also want to keep mm -hmm. them, they, they don't really like light. So I have a black construction paper that maybe you could wrap around there. And uh, you, or you can keep it in a dark place. <clears throat> okay. So then the other thing you want to do is bedding. And bedding is really important for your own um, worm compost at, or worm farm at home. You can layer soil and sand. It's kind of nice to make it layered because as your worms burrow on through there, you can see how they mix it up. Then the other thing you need is worms. Now, not all worms are the best composting worms. Here at Sauter Village, we have some red wiggler worms. I don't know if you can see that, but I have them in a banana peel here. They really like bananas. <laughs> you see that, Aaron? I do. That, you keep them over there. <laughs> so um, red wiggler worms are really great because they stay close to the top and they love compost. So they are great. But if you can't find red wiggler worms, night crawlers also will do. Okay. And in a container like that, you probably only need three or four um, worms. You don't need a, need a lot because they do reproduce. And then you might be wondering, okay, what do I feed them? Well, this is the great part about it is because they like both kitchen scraps and kind of what we call browns, which are cardboard, newspaper, or leaves. So to give you some idea here, um, the greens I have are these food scraps. I had some leftover spinach that I forgot in the back of my refrigerator. But I also have some carrots, um, some zucchini ends, potato peelings, and some coffee grounds. And that makes up my greens. So I'm gonna mix that all up together. And then we want to have the other 50% be uh, browns. And browns provide the worms with energy. So here I have some leaves, I have some egg paper cartons that I uh, tore up, some newspaper. You can even use the toilet paper center. So worms really like this. So you would just mix 50% of the greens and 50% of the browns together. Might wanna tear up this a little bit. And then you would want to feed your worms. And I just go ahead and I sprinkle it across here like this. And you would just use a little bit of this in a smaller container like this. And I might not even use it all. So I'll just put it in a plastic bag and put it in the refrigerator for a little bit later. And um, like I said, I'll put a lid on it to keep it um, covered and so that they don't like light. And I'll let them go to town. And then at the, as we keep feeding them, um, I have, I put another layer here, but this is vermocompost. This is all this worm poop. We have a little bit of eggshells left over there. We got a little heavy handed the first time. But um, yeah, this is what our gardener loves to see. And we'll give that to her here as she's planting up Sauter Village Gardens. Now also, do you put like water in there at all or anything? Oh yes, I, I um, definitely have forgotten about that. Um, so you really want to keep it moist but you don't want to keep it saturated. Okay. You don't want to drown your worms. It's a little so, bit damp, but not, right. yes. not a lot of And that's water. what helps with the holes punch, punch in the bottom, because oh, if yeah. you do overwater, then um, it'll just leak out the bottom. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So keep it moist, keep them fed, and pretty soon you'll have lots of nice plant food. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, how often do you feed the worms? That, that was the other thing that I was thinking about. Yes, so um, when you're starting off, maybe just every couple days or once a week as they get established, okay. but as they start to really go to town, we'll feed them every day. Okay. And, and also keep them, check the water content. Like I'll get in here and kind of squeeze it and um, you can see it kind of keeps together and no water came out. So that's the perfect moisture content. Gotcha. You don't need to buy any pH meters or moisture meters. You can just use your hands. And if you remember the 50-50 rule, you shouldn't have any trouble with odor and that type of thing in your worm farm. Gotcha. Well, that's a little bit about worm farms from Chris. Thank you very much. This whole week, we've got all kinds of stuff de like dealing with and dedicated just to worms and how important they are to your gardens and to your life out and, and just growing everything and also the worm poop. Uh, so thanks for joining in, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys later this week as we talk about worms.